You are listening to the Pompet Podcast, the edutainment podcast about lifestyle, wine, and spirits, hosted by Yolanda Shoshana. Let's get this party started. Hey, hey, it's Yolanda Shoshana. Thank you so much for tuning into the Pompet Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to do a recap of Vin Expo New York. Well, my experience at Vin Expo. Uh, in case you don't know what that is, it's this big trade event that they've done in France. They've do, done it in Hong Kong and people get together. They come, they showcase their wine, their master classes and workshops. Well, Vin Expo was in New York for the first time last week on Monday and Tuesday. And I hope they continue to do it here because I think it will only get bigger. There were some winemakers and producers that were here in the U.S. for the first time wanting to get a little love for their wine. It's always exciting to meet people that want to get their wine here and they've come to New York for the first time. I love that. I went to three really great master classes, one on Barossa, which is a wine region in Australia. And I went to a wines of Rhone. I love Rhone wine. I think it's absolutely amazing. And I think my favorite master class was the champagne class. Now I love bubbles, but there was something very special about this class and eight different people got to present their wine. So that was really awesome. The Barossa class actually was the one that kicked it off for me. And it was on Monday at 1030 in the morning. And I have to say, I felt really good after I tasted some wonderful wines and a lot of them were different from each other. So Barossa's got a lot of stuff cooking and I have a feeling they're going to be pushing this region even more. So be on the lookout for wines from Barossa and expand your palate on Australian wine. There is a a wine that most people know, Yellowtail, uh, <laughs> that uh, most people get, but they don't go beyond that. So I challenge you, if you only know about Yellowtail, to look for more wines from Australia, uh, especially in this Barossa region. They've got some wonderful reds that you can uh, pair with your food or enjoy while you're sipping. Wines of Rhone, I have nothing but great things to say. Uh, that The Rhone Valley region is just so spectacular. If you like French wine, there, you almost can't go wrong. I mean, of course, you probably can, but they've just got a delightful range of wines from uh, white to red to sparkling. I really love a good sparkling wine from that region. I think people don't talk about the sparkling wine there enough. And Champagne. Yeah, well, the champagne was off the charts. Like I said, there were eight different people presenting. A lot of them were grower champagnes because they're not huge champagne houses. Some of them are just family boutique houses. So uh, I think the champagne at Vin Expo New York was probably my favorite. It was some exciting stuff to see. And hopefully a lot of them will find some distributors and, and exporters, importers, because a lot of them have not been able to get their their juice here. Uh, if you're in England, you can get a lot of this stuff because you're right there in England makes it so easy. But as I've said in the USA, we make it so hard. Uh, at the end, toward the end, I'll give you the some wines of note that I tried. I mean, I tried a lot of wine. So the one thing that I got to go to that I thought was really one of the most interesting things was a press conference by the Wine Origins Alliance. And it is a group of winemakers and wine producers who have come together to make sure that uh, wine quality and wine from particular regions are authentic because there's a lot of fake wine out there. Uh, there was a man from Napa and he was saying that like in China, they're producing wine and saying it's Napa produced wine and that's not true. So they're putting Napa on the label, but it's actually produced in China. So there's a lot of people creating wine and putting the wrong stuff on labels and they're doing their best to ensure that everything is authentic. Uh, which I thought was just so interesting that they had their press conference and then immediately I got a press release. Um, bravo to them because I believe as the wine world gets even bigger and more people are consuming wine, this is going to become a bigger 
issue. And they're really um, pushing ahead. And I will keep up with that information and share it with you all as much as I get. But just know that people are really out there trying to ensure the quality and authenticity of wine. They did a survey and they said that people really do care about where their wine comes from and they want it to come from that place. So if you're drinking a Texas wine, you don't want it to actually be from Seattle, though Washington wines are fabulous. You just want to know that that is exactly where it is coming from. And I think that that was probably one of my favorite talks. There were things, of course, on how millennials are changing the wine world and how to market to millennials. I didn't necessarily need that information. But at the end of it all, it's that it's going to be difficult to market to millennials because it's an ever-changing market. And they're saying that fewer millennials are on these social media sites. Uh, They're not going to social media for their information as much. So how are you going to reach the millennials? I think it's going to be an interesting conversation, but I don't think it's just millennials in that market. A lot of people don't want to be on Facebook anymore. And I mean, millennials couldn't care less about Facebook, but other people don't want to be on Facebook anymore. It's so negative. So how are you going to reach the masses? It's going to be interesting to see where the wine and wine tourism put their dollars and how they start to market and how they do everything else. Uh, just basically the whole conference to me was interesting. And I bumped into two people I went on a press trip uh, with a couple years ago in Spain. I got to bump into them again, which was so, so nice. Shout out Courtney and Chris. For, uh, so that was good as well. And I got to meet some really wonderful people. So some wines of note. Now, mind you, I tried a lot of stuff that was good, but some things that I'm going to keep an eye out for myself, I believe I tried this wonderful sparkling wine from Argentina called Jasmine Monet, and it was the first time that they were in the States, and they're going to try to push and bring the wine here. It's also an organic wine. But the label was absolutely stylish and chic, something I think would go great in New York, especially at restaurants. But it was so lovely, just a great wine. And as I've said before, and I'm going to continue to say this, we are sleeping on sparkling Argentinian wines. I do think it could be the next to be on the come up. But what he told me is that it's so hard to get distribution in the U.S. for the sparkling wines. It is also kind of difficult for them to produce this organic sparkling wine in Argentina. So hopefully that all comes together. But Jasmine Monet, stylish and chic, um, just something I think that especially women would be attracted to because it's the kind of bottle you want to have when you're with your girls because there was a, like an animal print on one of them and the other one was like a stylish black uh, I believe the rosé had the animal print and the other one was, it was just nice, but it was really good. Both of the wines I enjoyed tremendously. I got to have Brotherhood wine again, which I haven't had in years. So Brotherhood Winery is the oldest winery in America. It's in Newburgh, New York. And somehow I actually got to go on a press trip to Newburgh to go and check out this winery. It's a lovely winery that a lot of people don't know about, but they've got an interesting history and the wines are pretty good. They're base, they're really lovely, uh, wines for every day, like a nice sparkling wine, but they are coming out with a wine called I love New York. It's going to be a red. I wasn't able to try that because it's not ready yet. I couldn't get a date on when the wine would be released or when it would be available, but they're working really hard. They've worked with the state of New York so that the label is okay. So if you live in New York, it's a great gift. If you want to send it to somebody that's from New York, it would be a great gift. I'm sure it'll be a nice red table wine. Uh, their, their wines are pretty solid. Like you could go to Brotherhood's uh, wine shop and come out with like a couple of cases of wine and still have not spent a lot of money. They've got this um, holiday wine, which is kind of uh, spicy, which you could put in your crock pot. It's really good. I think it's only like $8 or something crazy like that. Like really, it, you know, if you like New York state wines or if you want to be nostalgic, check out Brotherhood Winery. I think they pretty much ship everywhere around the world. So I think that would be a nice treat for all your uh New York friends or people who um 
have left the, the state and missed it a little bit. And I got to try these other lovely wines from Hintley Farm. They are an Australian winery. They've got these two wines called Beauty and the Beast. One is Beauty and the other one is the Beast. I loved Beauty. That was, it was so sexy. It just was smooth on the palate. Some wonderful berry flavors, a little hint of uh, violet. Gorgeous, um, gorgeous. And then the, the beast was actually also pretty good. I want to say there was a little more pepper in that one. Not a lot, but both of them are quality wines and it's called Hintley Farm. And the wines are just now kind of coming to the USA. I'm sure if you're in England and all these other places, you can get them because like I said, you all make it so much easier for people to get your wine. I tried a lovely wine from Chile. Uh, the winery is called Don Tony Perez. Uh, they're a small winery and they've got the, a nice line of red wines from Chile. They also have a white. But I tried their Petit Verdot and I loved it. And I happened to be talking to the woman who was behind the booth and I can't remember her name, unfortunately. And she goes, oh, this is the family favorite. So she was actually, um, she's part of the family. I believe the family is running the, the wines and the winery themselves. But really nice. So if you're looking for a nice Chilean wine, um, they have a small distribution, but they're looking to do a little bit more. They don't want to do all the work themselves, as they say. But um, those were some wines of note. And I also tried a wonderful champagne called Colet. I can't even tell you. I know you can get it in San Francisco, I believe, right now. And they're looking to do more. This champagne was so good. All of them. I think I tried four in total. But Colet beautiful. When she told me the price, I almost fell out. She gave me the price in euros at the beginning. And then she told me what it was in the U S and she said $35. And I'm like, what you talking about Willis? She said, it's $35. Let me tell you something. If I could get my hands on bottles of Colet, I would probably have a bottle each week. $35 for the quality of what was in that bottle was absolutely superb. And they make the, the champagne specifically to pair with food. Not that you can't pair all champagne with food, but some of it uh, is definitely more geared toward gastronomy than others. This champagne was delicious. And you spell it C-O-L-L-E-T. And I hope I'm saying it right. I'm sure I am because they, in French, you don't pronounce the, the T. Colet. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. C-O-L-L-E-T. And some of the champagnes from the, the master class that I really enjoyed, um, I think, were they both made by women? I know the first one that I had was made by a woman, and I thought it was so good. Champagne Benet Gilmar, a wonderful female winemaker. She was there promoting her wine. It was the first time that they were in the U.S., and they're trying to get the distribution on Champagne Bonnet Gilmar. Beautiful wine. And then there was Champagne de la Vigne. Beautiful. I actually spent time at their booth. Uh, they're wonderful too. Also looking for, once again, looking for distribution. And hopefully when I was standing there, there was a distributor who had come, who had come up and hopefully that works out for them. And their rose was absolutely spectacular. So all in all, I had a great time. Master classes were so wonderful. I learned a lot more about the regions that I like. Um, grower champagnes are even more on the come up. And what I love about them is they're more affordable than some of the others. Everybody should be able to afford a bottle of champagne, I think. Um, because while it's luxury, we all deserve a little luxury, especially these days. <laughs> and it's so great with food. So I hope the next bow comes here again. I have got to somehow make it to the Hong Kong one, I think. I think that would probably be the most interesting. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening in the wine world in Hong Kong and, and also with spirits. So I believe it's like four days. That one, because it's so huge. Not everybody came to New York because they didn't know what to expect. And I hopefully it will grow and grow and grow. I do like the fact, though, that it wasn't so crazy that you could actually taste the wines and nobody was pushing everybody around. Because sometimes at wine tastings, people lose their mind and they act like they've never had wine before. <laughs> but way to go, Vin Expo New York. And I can't wait to come back here. So... 
be on the lookout for all Barossas and wines from Rhone and more Gros Champagne and wine from Argentina. That's what I want to leave you with. I love wine from Argentina. So if you want to follow my uh, sip snaps, I call them sip snaps. I am on Snapchat at Yolanda Shoshana. I'm also putting my sip snaps on my Instagram story. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me there at Yolanda Shoshana. And I'm going to be putting them on my YouTube channel, the the video ones. And don't forget to sign up for Pompette, my booze letter that comes out every week. Until next time, peace, love, and cheers. <laughs>